As a reviewer, I've got an appointment at 11 a.m. with Emma at the Women's Health Clinic. Look I'm having a procedure done to uh, stop myself kissing myself every time I've got. It's right, fucking posh in here, you know. I've only got really posh fucking magazines. So I'm reading one. Kids' books. Big Bear's Camp. I wonder what my big hairy vagina will be able to do after this fucking procedure. Mummy's saying to little bear, you've squashed mummy's flower. I hope you can fix it. I hope they can fucking fix my fucking flower. Yeah, Thank you so much for seeing me. Yeah. So tell me how you're going to improve my vagina. Well, what we're going to do is, we're going to discuss a little bit about your background as yeah. to what's brought you here. Okay. And then we'll talk about what potentially could have happened to your body to, to cause those symptoms. Absolutely. Um, a little bit about the anatomy of what's going on, and obviously in relation to you, we've already had a little bit of a conversation about where we're at in terms of your health. Yeah. And then we'll talk a little bit about the technology, what it does. You know, this isn't something that's new, that's just been invented. Yeah. Uh, it's something that's been around for a long while. Okay. Um, and we'll talk about why we need to possibly sometimes have more treatments than just a single one. Yes. Um, and we'll discuss sort of what happens to women in terms of ageing, um, childbirth, general health, and also what, what can potentially happen as we look forward to the menopause. You know, Wonderful. With the sunny horizon, because as women have a really good deal, don't we? We do, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? So. That makes sense, yeah. Well, I'm 43. I am perimenopausal. Um, and I'm having quite a lot of problems. Okay. Yeah, so we had a uh, health questionnaire that we always send to all of yeah, our yeah. patients that yeah. we've talked about. Are you happy for me to talk? Yeah, of course, so yeah. Everybody to hear about your, yeah. your Faluna. So we looked at, um, the reason we do this documentation really is because we need to know what's happening with you. Yeah. But overall we need to see the changes that are happening. The only way to, we can't come around to your house and measure your vagina. Okay. Because I would be on the road all day. Okay. Uh, that's not an ask No. <laughs> so what we do is we ask lots and lots of questions about what's happening in the bedroom, what's happening in the bathroom, and you tell us how you're finding the changes. That's what we call going on in the bedroom. There's a lot going on in the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> we need to do that, then. <laughs> that's a fucking loop, yeah. Yeah. The reason we ask those questions is because we ask you again after the treatment. Yeah. And the hope is that we will start to see some changes and it helps us to adapt the treatment for okay. the future. Yeah. It's really important as well because the data that you're giving us is feeding into a bigger data bank of all the women that we're treating so that we can see what's going on in different ages, different illnesses, different conditions, the amount of babies which helps us to then streamline the treatment a bit more so we get better and better and better. And this is not available on the NHS, is it? It's yeah. so sad, it saddens me because there's so many women out there that I'm going to be asking questions today that they are too frightened to ask, yeah. they're too frightened to talk about with friends um, and they can be quite sensitive. To me, they're not. I'm not frightened of saying I piss myself every time I cough, yeah. I piss myself every time I sneeze, I've been known to piss myself and I didn't know that I actually needed a piss. Um, I can laugh, wet through. Um, when I have been having intercourse, uh, there's been times where he's thought I've been really, really sexually excited and squirting. I have, but it's just because he's jiggling about on top of me and the glad has got that much pressure on it. I'm pissing all over him and I'm thinking, fucking hell, please hurry up and get off and you don't realise it's yeah. that. So I'm happy to sort of squash the mist of what men think is going on yeah. and actually say this is what's going on, how do we stop it, how can we improve it? It's not normal to weasel. I tell my friends I've pissed myself in the bowl for fuck's sake. Now I don't find it embarrassing saying that because I'm not being lazy by not going to the toilet. I've accidentally, it's an accident, like a toddler, thinking oh I've pissed myself, I won't be a minute. My friends will laugh at me if I can show you. If I'm going on a big night out, let's say we're going to an end party or a wedding or you've got lots of friends about, lots of laughing, yeah. I get hot so I cough because of my asthma. Um, I have to have one of these. Now, you get them in hospital, I actually buy them and have them at home. If I have a chest infection because I'm asthmatic, I cough and cough and cough. And believe me, and they're not cheap either. That's gonna do fuck all. That's a tenor lady. One sneeze, and I've covered that. So, normal night out for a meal, one of them. Big night out, mates, dancing, it's gotta be one of them. 
that is not nice and comfortable in your knickers. And God forbid anyone tries to knit your ass from behind, they're gonna wonder what the fuck you've got on. Unfortunately, this type of treatment was marketed, and I hate this, design a vagina. Vaginal facelift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because that sells, sex sells. Of course it does. I want the design of vagina. I want you to look at my vagina today and tell me that I've got the nicest looking vagina in the world <laughs> without you having do. actually had treatment because I haven't had it bashed about by a load of fellas. I haven't. Um, I don't like sticking things up there that shouldn't be up there, so I'm not going to sit, sit on a fucking 12 inch cucumber. I actually think it's all nice and tucked away nice. Yeah. However, the women who have got vaginas that are not tucked away nice, would this procedure help for them? Really, every patient is different. Okay. So every every patient that comes to us has got different stories to where their vaginas right. come okay. from, what it's done. Yeah, yeah. Some ladies are coming to us because they've had the trauma of having a child, there was a tear, yeah. they've either possibly had abuse, yeah, yeah. female genital mutilation. Yeah, yeah. All sorts of things could have happened. Sometimes it's just the fact that they've aged. So there's a lot of changes which I'll go through with you. Some of those ladies are ultimately looking at a surgeon's knife as being the, the, the best cure for Absolutely. it. Absolutely, yeah, cut it all the way and start again. But either don't want to go down that route no. or they want to keep the, the surgeon at arm's length. But the problem is if you operate on a lady that's in her 30s and 40s for urethral problems, unless it's affecting their life to the point where they're constantly incontinent, you know, coughing and it's stress incontinence, can't go on a trampoline. If we operate on somebody in that age group, Remember, we're, we're subject to ageing. It's a bit, you know, no different to a face. The way that, yeah, you know, like, your face stops collapsing with age. Yeah. Does your fanny collapse? Everything does. So everything's like, as we're all getting older, things are falling out. So my fanny's falling out more now in the 40s than it would have been in the 20s. Well, this is it. Even though I gave birth when I'm 21, would yeah. that have had an effect and continuous effect? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The sensible thing that we've done, a lot of clinics will talk to people, send them away to think about it. We're mums. This is the unique thing about what we do as a group of nurses. We're all mums. We've all had a treatment. Yeah. So we all know what it feels like. Yeah. Um, we also know how, from a practicality, it's not easy to get in and out and into town, out of town. So we offer patients um, a nurse at every single stage of their, their journey. So yeah. There's no salespeople. We talk to, you talk to a nurse, um, you talk about your symptoms and your signs, that nurse then sends you the documentation, you're then booked in at the clinic that you choose and you meet your nurse again, you have your treatment, you've got the nurse's contact. I mean, I'm in Manchester today, but you've got clinics all over, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. yeah, so, you know, they are easily accessible yeah. for most people, should they want it. Yeah, and the, the treatments are the same wherever you go, yeah. the nurses are trained to the same yeah. standard. I know what my viewers are going to be thinking now watching this, my likes and followers are going to be thinking, yeah, but how much is it, how much is it, how much is it, she's not asked how much it is. <laughs> it's not a free service, it's a private yeah. service, isn't it, and it's something you elect to have done. Yeah. And so, people are going to want to know how much it is. So in terms of our treatments, we've got a single treatment is 499. Yeah. And that's where we treat the inside of the vagina yeah. and the outside of yeah. that. For a programme of three, it's £995. And then what's like I say, some of our ladies will go 499 and then number two they will treat go for 496. Yeah. Which gives them a total of 995. Yeah. So yeah. it gives them that option. Yeah. As well. yeah. I mean, really, it sounds a lot of money just 499, it does. But you think about how much you spend on this shit and think about how it actually makes you feel. I mean, I can see this design of vagina if that's how some women want to say, I've come for vagina later today. Yeah. Some females might want to say, I feel better actually if I say I've got a design of it, I'm going for a design of vagina or whatever. Um, what a lovely gift to yourself to be able to give me um, a sense of where I'm I'm not going to be bothered about coughing and sneezing yeah. or laughing. Get enough, you mentioned a trampoline before. I couldn't even imagine yeah. jumping up and down. If I stood up and jumped up, I'd piss myself. So never mind a fucking trampoline. Yeah. So it sounds a lot of money, but when you put it all into perspective, it's not. No. We always ask the question. Yeah. Would you like to have a treatment today or would you like to go away and have a think of it? I'd like to have the treatment today, please. I thought you were. So this is going to, come, it's going to look like the sunshine, but remember when it's in the vagina it hits a mirror so it then goes into columns, so they're sort of rows of it. So it's going to be, it's a little bit warmer on here than it actually is in your bit. So are we ready? I'm ready. Are ready for it? Ready for it? Okay. It's fine. So that's not smoke, that's steam. Right, 
Don't worry, it's CO2 then, look. And then I'm going to chop it. pretty pattern now. Is everything in now that should be in? Yeah, but it feels fine. That feels okay, yeah? It just feels like you smear, really. So you're quite pleased with my vagina, though? Ooh, that's a bit hot, isn't it? It's a bit warm. Ooh. Best vagina ever. Best vagina ever? <gasps> 10 out of 10. See, kids? 10 out of 10. Ooh, now then. Ooh. That's round one, um, that bit felt a bit like um, as if you put shower head on yet and it's like a bit hot and you go whoo it's a bit like that and your vagina's warming up if you will so it just feels a little bit warmer than it did at first and then that's it really you just think oh so we're doing that we're doing the cage out okay and as you can feel more difficult to get it out than it was to get in yeah so it's already got a bit tighter, hasn't it? It does happen to some people. Not everybody. Some people are what I call more slow burn. Okay, so we're going to do the outside bit next, aren't we? Which is going to make the outside of vagina... Uh, vag <laughs> the, <ooh. laughs> the outside feel warm like the inside. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. Huh? So that's it. So let those legs flop again. Okay. So it's a bit undignified because I'm going to sort of move flappy bits around here, there and everywhere. Thanks. Flappy bits. There's no nice way to describe lady. I haven't got flappy bits though, have I? No. No. Fucking flappy bits. No beef curtains down there, is there? Nope. Nope. Nice and tight. Nicely tucked away. Okay. I'm ready. I'm going to start in this. <laughs> Manageable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel okay. <laughs> what if I were to wait? What would happen? Would you just buy all my pets? sensation that I've never felt around my vagina before. Um, I can imagine if somebody had a, a lighter, I don't smoke, but if you light a lighter and then let the flame go a bit, take it off and then put it on your hand, that sort of heat. It's that kind of heat. Um, it's just, it's not painful, it's a little bit unpleasant simply because your body's not used to it, so it makes you want to jolt a little bit. Um, but yeah, I feel absolutely fine. What can I feel now in my vagina? Um, it just feels like it's been a bit used. That's the only way I can describe it. Um, it doesn't feel painful. Um, no, I feel fine. I just, I just know something's been there. Um, yeah, just a bit used. I've just been a bit used, but used for the right purposes. So, all done. All done. How's it feeling? I feel absolutely fine. Um, I don't feel like I've been interfered with it all now. I did a little bit like two minutes ago, but it's all died down now. I thought I might have to go on and sit on a bag of frozen peas, but not fine. I feel absolutely fine. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you.